<laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's Thursday, August 24th. You are listening and watching the Daily AI Live Show. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So today we almost got the whole crew back. Jimmy hopefully will be uh, joining us soon, um, maybe this week, maybe next. And today we are talking about automation tools. So specifically, if you looked at show notes, we said we wanted to talk about uh, Zapier or Zapier. Maybe that's the first the first discussion point is how the hell do you pronounce it? Um, well, they call them then, Zaps. Uh, Zaps, so it's probably Zapier. Zapier. It's a it's yeah. a it's a GIF, not a GIF. Just so you know, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> podcast that's out it. well. That's it. What's the, I want the pushback and I want it now. It's a gift. <laughs> Where, where's the gosh, country variation language? It's a kind of pattern. Is peanut butter, right? All right. Oh, that's a good that's a good point. You know, Carl, with you being from uh what's the Canada and, and Aaron, you come from Australia. Do you guys like are there are there any different um variations in the names? I think make, by the way, we can assume is just make. I think we yeah, got I, that one. I think that's yeah. probably what we oh, agree no, on. It's Make. Make. See, I always thought it was Zapier because um, automation should make you happier, and therefore you should use Zapier. Uh, that's cute. I'm a thousand percent. So, as you saw, yeah, probably a little bit of a squirrel uh, comment on here. We, we will we will never get to anything good if we uh, we probably talk about that. So, we'll assume at this point it's uh, it's Zapier, and I like Andy's uh, point to it too that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that uh, Zapier Tonight, is, uh, there's Zaps, so it probably is Zapier. So well, okay, let's, you, let's back no, up. Let's back up. Who wants a, a sample Zape? You have a sample Zape that you're going to show, right? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, but before we get into that, who wants who wants to just take a, a quick stab at maybe talking about automations? Let's just broadly talk about that. I mean, we could talk about the tools. Let's talk about it, and then you know, who wants to take a stab at how? Just because it's an automation does not make it AI. And that comes up a lot. Well, I, I want to just make a, a, somebody can do that, but I want to make a transition from yesterday's show because it was a really mm -hmm. good segue because yesterday's show was was about Langchain and a very technical, uh, mostly no code, but mo also a lot of code in order to integrate different apps, different uh, uh, functions using um, language models and other tools. Um, so this today's show is actually for those who don't want to get into the coding piece. This is using tools that are uh, basically a wrapper around those those particular technologies and that coding. So they do the heavy lifting of the integration of the app. So you basically select from a, a drop down list of which app you want to reach out to and which API when you, you want to access. And so they make it a lot easier for those who don't want to learn or don't have the capabilities for uh, Lang chain. So I love that we kind of had these back-to-back -back sessions. So whatever you were trying to do yesterday, but it was over your head and confusing and you wanted to do some integrations, you might really enjoy this one because this is a, I'll say it's no code, but it's it's not no technical. <laughs> it's still, it's still going right. to be technical, but that's, yeah. that's my first kind of intro to this, this today's talk. Well, and I'll give an example for Brian, right? Like I had a couple of days where I was driving home in my car and I forgot to turn the lights out because my car is old enough that it does not do that automatically. Um, so I have a reminder set that when I drive to my GPS location, it gives me a reminder and says, turn your lights out, right? That is an AI in the way that we are now thinking about AI. Right. But GPS was pretty phenomenal right i mean there is yeah. a there is a like satellite tracking with my phone <laughs> kind of thing um but that's an example i would say of uh something that is automated but is not ai in the way that we think welcome back <laughs> so it's coming into it's definitely zapier like happier which <laughs> by the way i'm always going to remember that now that's us yeah, that is <laughs> awesome tiktok about this adorable oh, okay so okay Thanks, so it's, it's even saying zapier has come out and said it is officially zapier <laughs> which is good because now I can let the Zapier people know, and I'll I'll feel like I have the higher I, for, for the for the really uninitiated. There's a whole thing like home automation that's been around for a while, and if this you can ask Alexa or Google, you know, to right. do things in your home. Yep. That's making sort of electronic connections to the devices in your home. This is connecting uh, these uh, automation tools. Basically, use APIs and structured API integrations that will do something with some other 
app server out there and, and they connect to thousands like Zapier has thousands of things they've already pre-integrated with and you can select from a list so you can automate a whole bunch of things from your slack to whatsapp and, and many many more and can, can yeah. i ask you andy if you could just delve just one little layer deeper on that uh, define api and exactly a little bit about just just the, the technical piece of how it works like what is that application programming interface but what exactly is going on with that just just briefly so we can people yeah. can understand so um it's it stands for application programming interface and what what a, a a company that's providing a service on the cloud or on the web is doing is they're publishing the rules by which you can access endpoints that serve a function so that api is published out there you go to api documentation on their website it says okay here are the endpoints that you can touch this one call, you know, it calls our database of customers and, get, and gives you the details about the customer information. And so a programmer who's wanting to connect, say, our financial system to uh, the CRM system can use those APIs to say, okay, whenever I get this kind of information coming in on a transaction, I want to get all the details from the CRM system. So this is code, the API coder, says, okay, go reach out to this endpoint that has this address and ask for these parameters. These parameters are also published as being available through that endpoint. So th they can also publish uh, specific actions. And now in the world of AI, there are more sophisticated actions that are accessible via API. So Zapier does uh, a, a connection to Chatbase, for example, and, and, and allows Chatbase to uh, respond with a text string based on some input that Zapier delivered to it. And that is then used in some other application, kind of a general uh, picture of how it works. Very okay. good, very good. Are, are, is there always an API key? No, like, that's only when no. you're being charged for the API. Most API okay. endpoints are free to use unless, or you might have to have on a big SaaS system, say like an, a financial ERP, you would have to be a subscriber to that in order to use the API. So the so, API is sort of like a series of back doors uh, that people need to know where they are in order to go and get. And the API key is like a personalized secret handshake that only occurs sometimes. I love yeah, that. And, and yeah. I think a, a, a better answer to your question, Beth, is that, yeah, there's generally an API key. You, you, if there's any uh, interest in maintaining security on the information that's available through the API. So that's a, that's a uh, you know, it's a, a security protocol. Okay. You, they need to be authorized to have mm -hmm. access to this data. Then you have an API key. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Carl? Oh, uh, just saying like the, you know, the first in, ever... Uh, use case I've ever had for AI automation was I think back in 2013, 14, when I first started using a HubSpot and it didn't have a native integration to a Salesforce. So you had to run HubSpot through Zapier to Salesforce to push essentially a contact from HubSpot to Salesforce. Eventually they had that native in integration. So you can just put sales automatic HubSpot to Salesforce or vice versa. But that's the first thing that I always talk about is do you have a, <clears throat> does the software have a native integration to another software? And most of them say yes, or they say, oh, yes, we do. You can use Zapier to connect it, right? Yeah. That's usually the, the <clears throat> next conversation. Yeah. And, and all Zapier does is they've they've, they've already ex, they, they've done the work of coding to the API endpoints. Mm -hmm. They've selected certain of the endpoints that are likely mm -hmm. to be used by people who use Zapier, which so is why Zapier it's quite limited. Point and click to, yeah. to create a connection between two apps. Which is why some of these, that which we're going to talk about here in a second with Brian's use cases, is that some of these actual uh, predetermined. Uh, zaps or or connections have parameters <laughs> yeah they, they, they don't actually um do everything you might want it they, they live right. sometimes they limit it to what they want you to have access to or how they want you to have access which leads me to i think a good segue to brian and and my one comment about the next logical thing for people to understand is that there's triggers 
So triggers are a big part of how make.com and, and Zapier, Zapier Cash, I'm not going to say, uh, <laughs> how they actually operate because it's kind of like an if then or or a trigger that sets off the chain of events. So Brian, you want to go through your couple of use cases? Of course, I have one to show too if you want, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Um, so I will show... Um, I will show the Zapier one first and I'll show you um, sort of what I built. Um, let me just do my entire screen. While you're doing here. that, Carl, do you want to answer uh, Anne-Marie's, Anne-Marie, Anne Murphy's call, uh, question here? She targeted you specifically, so nobody's allowed to answer but you. <laughs> Thank well, you, you know, man. <laughs> you know what's, uh, well, well, so I saw a really great TikTok yesterday that encapsulates everything that I've been usually talking when I talk about businesses. And they take it even further and they, this is how they use AI with it. So you take, you, you know, you list all the tasks you do every day that is repetitive. And then you actually put that into chat GPT and ask it to make a flow chart for you. Once, if you have code, and, um, one of the plugins, I think you can show do that. Me. Or, show or, me, we'll do it. <clears throat> it'll show you to, yeah, ask you to show it to do. And then what you do is you take that, that flow chart and you go into a Zapier or make and build that out using, you know, how, how you've, how you've laid it out. Now with Zapier, you have the, the new AI function, which you can just type in, I do this, 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 and it'll generate a potential zap for you. Hmm. Similar to exactly what, what Brian has right here. And, where he and by the way, make, if you go to their home screen right now, it's like sign up for their beta of exactly what you just said, Carl, which is you just type in a natural language, what you're trying to accomplish. And it comes back with the suggestions and it already pre-built out for you. So that's kind of where this is going. I mean, to your point, Robert, you were saying like, it's pretty, it's pretty hands off, but as this will show, like, it's not, it's not, automatic it does take right. a little bit of tweaking and stuff so here's what this one does you can see there's several steps here and essentially what it is is like i'm going to start in a slack channel and i'm going to show well, you guys well, what that looks before like you before you start i just want to go back to ann's question and see if if carl could address what's the first thing you do when you're problem solving like when they're not working what's the first go-to solution carl where you begin with oh so this is a lot of like trial and error Right. Because okay. I think Brian's going to show you exactly all the steps related okay. to it. So yeah. where do you start? Where do you end? And then in Zapier, they have a like test, 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 test. Yeah. And that helps you before you even publish this right. thing. It will test the data for you. So I'm and sure even, Brian. Yeah, and Make does yeah. the same thing. They'll tell you where it's breaking. Yeah. So that, yeah. and Murphy, hope that answers your question. Go ahead. Sorry, Brian. No, it's OK. Um, so look, this is, it's fairly, this is a fairly simple one, even though it's got what it's six steps to it. We're starting in Slack, we're ending in Slack and in between we're running four different chat GPT calls that that's it. Right. So it's, it's pretty easy, but they're just building on themselves. And then we're going to get a result in Slack at the end. So what are we trying to do at the beginning? Well, what I created for internally for my team was I wanted to be able to put it in a persona in an industry. And I wanted chat GPT in the same way that we would do it in, in chat GPT ask for some uh, some information back. So I want an attention grabbing opening statement, some common challenges and pain points, anticipated objections, and a call to action. And if we go into any one of these, like if you go into this particular trigger, like by the way, trigger, right? That's the first thing that's gonna happen. So the trigger is I type in this particular text prompt into, into Slack and it kicks off this, this issue. So Zap knows, Zapier knows where to go, what what channel I'm in 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 Slack, where what I need to type. All of that is predefined in here, and you can kind of like if we were to dig into these, and I, I won't go like deep into this, but then basically what we're doing is we're saying, okay, once you grab this text, which is called Prep Me, you can kind of see it here on the screen, but it's probably really tiny. We're using the 3.5 Turbo model. And then you can see there's a bunch of information here. And essentially what this is doing, and these, I won't go into all of them because they're very similar, but basically towards the bottom, I'm giving a summary of scale.com, which is the company I work for. But at the top, I'm talking about, hey, what do I want you to do for me? And I'm saying, look, and this, was, this part was really tricky. If you see it here, like where I say the industry is whatever is written in the user message, i.e. from Slack, after quote industry column, uh, colon and before role. So I had to get really, really, really specific about where specifically do I want you to look chat GPT 
for this information in order to run the results. And so if we run through this whole situation, let me see if I can, without stopping and starting sharing, let me see if I can pull up. Uh, so I have to stop and start sharing again, just so I can show you guys um, what the, what the uh, Slack message looks like. I, um, I like Anne's response. It helps. Man. I kept skipping, skipping the test part. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm trying to figure out how to, how to share the scale of the, um, the Slack. While window. you're working on that, Brian, let me just say that for context, what Brian's showing is a, a very interesting and complicated interaction with chatbot and, uh, and, and presenting that in Slack. A key thing that Carl mentioned uh, in one of our previous episodes is that one of the virtues of a simple automation that puts something into a known channel where your employees are already right. working is that it gets past the barriers of learning and, and becoming familiarized with working with chat GPT directly in order to improve their efficiency and whatever their role is in the company. So here's an example of giving access via Slack to a really well-programmed you know, response that is used frequently by the scaled uh, consultants. And I wanted to just point out also that other more simple automations are used by companies where you're really just moving a piece of data that comes in from one system to another system. And those are even easier to understand as a simple example of a, an early automation. But this is really good. And so, you know, buckle so down, <laughs> follow Brian here. We're, we're, we're doing something interesting. Well, I'm going to show you something easy, even easier to do and make that literally anybody could do. And I'll talk about that in a second. I cannot share my Slack screen, unfortunately, because it just goes into that infinite window thing. I tried three times, but I will just tell you that the bot is called the um, prep bot. P-R-E-P -E bot that I named it. And essentially I type in industry. In this case, I typed in Apple device management platform. And I said the role was CRO. And what I get back is it just runs all those uh, chat GPT commands. And I get a plethora of information as well as a um, message that I could write directly to somebody in that role, along with the call to actions and any anticipated objections. So essentially what it does is like I put in any role or industry and it gives me back a highly detailed, personalized, as personalized as you can get with those two qualifications um, to get a really great message back from it. So that's what's going on there. I apologize that I can't see it, but you can see here what's coming back from it how it's labeled and everything else back in the Slack bot. But super cool because you can just run it right from a Slack channel within your company and it goes and does all the messy work for you and just comes back with a really detailed answer that you could, I, I could easily add another trigger or another section here that says, now go write this in Gmail for me. So I could take my whole result and say, yep, that's exactly what I want. Start a new Gmail email for me and then just throw in the person's persona or whatever, or the name, and then I could send out that Gmail. So that's I, I one. Another point, which is what, what ex the example that you've used here shows the use of Zapier as a prompt manager in managing interactions with chat, GPT, open AI, or other, uh, you know, other large language models that are accessible through Zapier. Uh, you know, you know, Building a prompt, you see how much text is involved in each one of the prompts that Brian did. He's a, he's a prompt master. He's the trainer for prompts for the AI exchange. So there's a lot of uh, intellectual property that's put into that. You would capture that in Zapier and give it to everyone in your company. So as one person does all this programming in effect of how to right. interact with ChatGPT to mm -hmm. get exactly what you want. And it's automatic. And then all they have to do is get onto that Slack channel, put in the, the uh, industry and the role and bang, out comes this beautiful preparatory document. Hmm. And so yes. what I'll say about that before I jump into this real quick, because I know um, you also have, um, you also have a uh, example, example too um, yeah, I that I want to make sure I, I say for that. But what I'll say to that real quick, Andy, is like you, you have to meet people where they currently are no matter what the solution is, right? So I don't, I don't care what I'm teaching somebody, whether it's, you know, formally in, in nutrition and, and fitness and stuff like that. When I owned a gym, you have to meet people where they currently are. And if a lot of your organization is in Slack, 
meet them in Slack to the best of your ability to solve these problems. Don't force them to have to go sign into ChatGPT and these other things because you won't get the adoption rate you're looking for. You've got to make it as smooth and easy as possible. And that's just mm -hmm. something anybody can take with them is to the best of your ability, go to where the end users are and start there. So here's a real quick example we make. Now, I will preface this by saying, and this is no joke, I had never used Make before last night, but I wanted to be prepared for this call. <laughs> I, in the time, I, from the time I signed up for a free account to the time I show you this result was 30 minutes end to end. This is insane. So what I did was I first went into ChatGPT and I said, give me 10 titles. I think I, I may have deleted one here. Give me 10 titles about AI from current AI events and news. So I used the plugin to get the, the um, use the internet. I said, give me a couple keywords and write me a quick excerpt. That's the starting point. And I, and I copied and pasted it directly into a, um, a Google Sheet. This is the integration. Google Sheet, open AI. Here's the result. 10 1,000 word blogs written on each subject along with every single um, excerpt on there. And guys, these are pretty damn good blogs. <laughs> now, I'm not saying I wouldn't edit them. I wouldn't copy and paste them directly into LinkedIn. But this... My wife and I talked about this last night when I explained it to her and we were just talking, I explained it to her. I was talking to her about it. I said, check this out, babe. I said, like, look what this just did in 30 minutes. And she said, um, she goes, can you imagine when we owned the gym, we owned the CrossFit gym and then we owned a nutrition business. We were writing blogs all the time. She's like, how many hours did that just save? And I was like, uh, well, let's think about that. Each one of these to research, come up with the keywords and write a first draft 1000 word blog is solid two hours. Never did it faster than that. That's just what it takes. So in 30 minutes and not even 30, because this is the time it started me to just sign up for the damn account to 10 <laughs> 1000 word blogs. I literally saved myself 20 hours of work. That's not even an exaggeration. Right. That's the power of this stuff, guys. And so, you know, we could dive into these, but essentially it's exactly what you see here. I have the Google Sheets, open AI calls from the Google Sheets. So you can see it's calling the title, the excerpt, the keyword. And then it's taking those and saying, output those here with the finished reasoning into a new Google Sheet, which is exactly what you see here. Amazing. Just, just cool as hell. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. So, Aaron, you said you wanted to jump in real quick. It's, 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 yeah. So, I, I, I mean, obviously, I'm coming at this from the marketing angle. So, Zapier and um, Make, are, you know, they're well known in the marketing industry. Um, and like simple use cases for tools like that, where you don't have to get in, any sort of sophistication, is as an example, you run a Facebook ad, and Facebook has an option for what's called a lead ad. But that's when you click on the ad has a little form that pops up in Facebook. You fill out the details, you submit, and off you go. Now, to I still don't understand why Facebook hasn't done this yet, but that information is stuck in Facebook. You've got to log in and download it. And there are a few CRM systems, I think, that they have. Uh, was it Andy? I think you were talking about APIs, like they can talk to each other. But generally speaking, they don't have a lot of sophistication there, even after this tool has been available for years. So... A lot of marketers use um, Zapier, for example, to pull that info out of Facebook, throw it into their CRM, fire off an automated email or add a, a lead information to a Google Sheet or any number of different things. So you can get really cool stuff there that saves a lot of time but is not sort of propeller head stuff. It just makes sure you more effective in the marketing side of things. So, you know, you don't even have to get chat gpt or anything involved to make use of these kind of tools but obviously that gives you a whole pile of extra functionality as well nowadays so that that was my main thing okay i want to jump in real quick and just show a, a more complex version I know you can't really see the, the details on those but here is a one of the five different make models modules that we are using to put together for a large project that we're doing and and the beauty of this it shows you the different types of of integrations that you can different tools that you can you know add and i love make for this reason because you can see what's happening where and when it's it's a, it's a linear progress but there's there's ones that go and br branch off into a tree so it isn't always going to be a line okay um so what, the way this works is Airtable is what's going to house all of our data and then each one of these is a gpt function call or a call to the api 
for specifics about the data that we comprise from an interview with a client, because we're basically doing a, uh, a fractional CMO project. So we're basically going into the organization and, and uh, working on a, a, a report or an assessment of their company. So this particular one is the team skills assessment. So when you look into these zaps, you have tons of, of uh, variables that you have to tune, which is why I don't call this non-technical. It's still very technical, but you have to understand that these are the parameters that within the APIs of GPT, you have to actually configure. So what role is it? It's a system role. What role? It's a user. And so you're you're basically creating the prompt within these different variables. And of course, which kind of model you want to use, right? Uh, and that, that does make a big difference. So then the way this works, of course, is once you've got all that, then it it will uh, go back to and feed that information, the results into Airtable. So each one of these is a different uh, purpose, right? Uh, so at the end of the day, if you watch the very end of this whole make uh, linear progress, is it outputs to a Google Doc. So similar to what uh, we just saw from Brian is that the, the, the goal is an output that is hands off. So uh, and there's other ones that we were developing that basically takes you know whisper and transcribes a Zoom call and an interview, and then that goes into the same type of uh, progress. But this is this is game changing. I mean, this is ability to create a, a produce a document that all you need is the input, all you need is the data, and it does all this very sophisticated, very uh, IP based you know ass assessment because all the prompts as somebody said earlier, I think it was Andy. Uh, this is where the intellectual property is, is in how to craft those prompts so that everybody in the organization can use this tool, right? So I think it's just a brilliant, this is, this is where I think a lot of people should be using AI is in this type of no code <laughs> integration Absolutely. stuff. So I'm just like going to speak up say, here ahead, and go say ahead. that if that long string that represented the individual prompts seems really intimidating, that is actually what the prompting course that uh, AI exchange does, right? I mean, it gives you some kind of um, ideas about ways that you can use it, but the real like meat and potatoes of this is that kind of thinking. It's, and that was just, that's not super intuitive for me. So it was really helpful to like see examples to be in a cohort of people who are also struggling with this. Um, and that's gonna take us regardless of what we do with prompts right? This is setting up the foundation for being able to automate things, to being able to uh, make things much more complicated from the base level of where you just need to know what your process is. Yeah, I have I a question for you, Robert. Uh, you know, with those complex uh, make uh, workflows, uh, can you do a parallelization? That is, one uh, one input or trigger actually kicks off two different lines like that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you can, uh, I mean, split, you, you right? can actually branch off and do multiple things. Yeah, it's it's um it, it's really hard to find limits to what it can do. That's that you, your brain is not going it, to it, it's it's not going to find limitation. Your only limit the limitation is going to be your ability to cr something creative. You know, so um, that's what I like about it. Uh, but I like make better because I, I feel like a visualization. I like to see things. You know. Yeah, yeah. I agree so, with you. Make I found make to be much easier to use than uh, a Zapier. I mean, just I mean, I think case in point, you know, I and I, I have a little bit of experience messing around with this stuff. So it's not, it's not like it's the first time I'm seeing it. But without a doubt, from the minute you log in the make, it just has a much more user friendly, welcoming feeling to it than I felt like Zap does. And mm -hmm. I can't speak to well, number one, I can tell you it's cheaper and almost across that, all. That's what I was about to say. I'm just looking at the prices and it's a, it's big, a big price difference. difference between them. So yeah, no, I, yeah. Yeah, I want to I drop a bomb on everybody who, who's thinking about using this and people in this call who are using it. There's a tool called that's maybe out right now, but it's coming out called Eden.ai. Has anybody mm -hmm. heard of that? So I was checking it out yesterday when you sent it. When you yeah. sent it, yeah. So, so that is pretty dang brilliant because right now we're okay. Here's a GPT, um, and maybe you might be able to jump into Anthropo. Oh, what nice. Eden's going to do is you're going to be able to be like, I want you to change which language model you're using. It basically has access to all the language models, mm -hmm. and they have a deal with all of them, so they don't actually uh, uh, upcharge the price of the tokens or the uh, the whatever the cost structure is. So you're going to pay whatever you'd pay if you went to 
uh, APIs or GBT or Anthropic or whatever. So that's pretty cool. So they don't upcharge. They, they don't. They don't make any money off of that usage. You don't have to have. You're using their access. Is my point. So this will this will allow you inside of Maker Zapier to choose a language model, which is pretty cool. Oh wow! Definitely. And so what I'll say here, I know we're sort of wrapping up on time, but what I was going to say is kind of like what all of you are saying, and I, I just agree, which is. Um, don't, don't try to eat the elephant in one bite, right? I mean, there's, there's a, a much better way to do this. So you saw the ba the basic, well, I would say fairly basic, but we could have even made it more basic on make. You could have gone in and said one line on a, a Google sheet, one run of yeah, answer some question, output it to the sheet over here. But then to Robert's point, it could have gotten more, or to Andy's point, it could have gotten more complicated. So where would I go from this three, three step process? Well, it outputted 10 blogs to a Google doc but we can assume they're not in my voice. So one of the first things I'm going to do is take that output of the Google doc. And then I'm going to say, Hey, ChatGPT, go make this sound more like me based on these examples. And then it's going to rewrite it. And I'm going to say, put that in a new Google doc. Okay. Then I could take that Google doc and I could say, I don't necessarily need thousand word blogs. I need five posts per thousand word blog. Okay. Go create me five post out, you know, uh, outlines. And then that, that maybe goes into a Google sheet or whatever. Then to your point, Andy, I might split it and I may go write me one for X, write me one for LinkedIn, write me one for Instagram mm -hmm. and suggest images or video ideas that I could put along with this to make sure it goes, you know, it, it, it's the right type of content. So from one simple input, my output on the very other end could be 50 post ideas spread across five different social media platforms. Yeah. All well, in my books. The thing is though, all of that is done within the chat GBT. You could do all the, what you just said, but of the course. beauty of this integration is that it does it's it all automated. each time. So you don't have to, you don't have to recreate that whole mm -hmm. flow you just mentioned when you have a new idea, you just, no. whatever the, the, whatever the Genesis, whatever the prompt, wherever the idea, Trend. it's like, it could be, like, I want to do it one on cats or on dogs or on eating ice yep. cream. It, you just give it the starting point and all the stuff you did is already made. It's almost like you're going back into the chat GBT history and be like reusing uh, something that, but you can't do that. in chat GPT. So this is beautiful because all the stuff you just mentioned, you can do it over and over again with yep. different ideas. Yeah. Beautiful. And as a right. matter of fact, the one and that set you... up just as a last point, sorry, Beth, is like that Google sheet is called watch new rows, which is literally what you just said, Robert. If I was to copy <laughs> and paste five new rows in there and then hit run, it knows what to do. Or I can yep. put it on an automatic every 15 minutes. And anytime anybody from my team added new rows to that document, it would yep. automatically run to the end. Right. Yep. So the point that I just want to make is uh, is an add on to that for the last like, I don't know, three, five years, people have been publishing like use these templates to like write really great LinkedIn posts or, you know, I analyze blah, 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 or Twitter threads or whatever that is. Sorry, it's not X, it's Twitter. Um, <laughs> and uh, and you can just add that in here. Right. I mean, like it, all of these things that we've been collecting for all of these years about how to do this just become additional parts of the instruction or additional parts of the um, template that we're giving it. Mm, very good. All on that Love note, uh, Brian, are we uh, we done? We're 30 minutes. Yeah, we're, we're a couple minutes over, but it's I thought it was worthwhile on this one. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's it, man. As always, uh, it goes quick. Thanks to our guests. Thanks to Ann and everybody else who showed up. I appreciate it. Keep the comments coming. If you have any comments after you watch this, go ahead and put them in the comments of it. I always go back and check on LinkedIn so you can always catch up there as well. Happy um, Thursday. Don't forget, we're on YouTube and we're also on uh, Spotify. So come check us out in all those wonderful places. Until tomorrow when we talk more about content. Bye. See ya.